Welcome to Web Handling. My name is Dave Royson. I am super excited to continue Dave's defect with wound roll blocking. This tight defect is common with adhesive products, but is also seen on many coated and printed products as well as some film chemistries. I know your time is precious, so let's get started. Blocking is when layers stick together too aggressively. Of course, it is your customer, the unwind, that defines how much is too much. If your customer looks closely, they will see an unwinding tangent that is delayed, meaning it departs later than the tangent between the unwinding roll and the first roller. Pay attention to that departure tangent shape. If that shape is not a straight and level line, there is a non-uniformity in adhesion, bagginess, misalignment, or some other factor. If the blocking is mild, your customer will see and hear stick-slip tension oscillations. These tension oscillations can cause both process and web handling problems. In the worst case, the departure tangent moves towards a 90 degree delay and the web tears. The first thing to understand about this and so many other defects is that there is no single root cause. This is the reason why RCA or root cause analysis techniques can be so ineffective, dangerously ineffective. Instead of a single root cause, there's a single root cause mechanics that have many factors of varying strengths and cost as listed here. It is not pedantic to make the night and day distinction between root cause and root cause mechanics. Mechanics is the only way to get a reasonably complete and correct set of options. For this problem, blocking, the mechanics are well known by winding experts. Two factors, chemistry and MD modulus, are owned by the web. Two factors, time and temperature, are owned by storage and transport. Only one factor, Winding tightness is owned by the winder. No worries, we'll explain all of this shortly. Many processes, not just blocking, are TTP problems plus chemistry. TTP stands for time, temperature, and pressure, which are often interchangeable within narrow bounds. The following simplified examples illustrate the possible trade-offs to achieve less blocking. Example 1. You may be able to store safely at room temperature for one month, but only a week at 30 degrees C. Example 2 requires knowing a bit about winding tightness, which we will outline here, but is covered in great detail in my award-winning and trademarked Web 101 class. The outcome is that pressure comes from winding physics. That is, you may be able to store safely for a month if you wind painfully loose, but only one week if you wind normally tight. Example 3 is what is often called better living through chemistry. Here, you might quadruple safe storage time under any conditions by tiny changes in chemistry. This principle is often called DFM, which stands for Design for Manufacturability. In fact, there are many chemistries and roll sizes that your business people and your customers might like, but are not manufacturable, i.e., can't be safely wound.
The pressure between the layers inside a wound roll is a decade-old, well-verified science that requires book-length discussion to detail. Here, however, we will just give you the highlights. The factors that determine the pressure in the wound roll include position, MD modulus, winding tension, winding nip, and winding torque if your winder is so equipped. In some cases, such as thermoplastic films, chemical shrinkage and thermal shrinkage are strong factors, often stronger than the winder itself. So, if you look at the list of the factors that affect pressure, you will see that as many as three belong to the web and as many as three belong to the winder. Thus, the expectation that you can kill blocking by winder tension taper or winder curves, for example, might be wishful thinking or even perhaps quite naive, depending on the details. Indeed, when we were finished with this discussion, you will see that the winder only owns three of a dozen blocking factors. While it is certainly the place to start, it may often not be the place where you finish. The following two slides outline what we learn in my two-day advanced winding course. The blocking pressure for a given time and a given temperature and for a given customer threshold of pain is given here in yellow. Any part of the roll that has a pressure higher than the yellow dotted line has failed. From the science of winding, we know that every wound roll of every chemistry wound on any winder and on any winder settings produces a pressure that is highest at the core, medium in the middle, and zero at the outside. The purple Magenta and red lines indicate a reasonable range of winding tightness that can be achieved in the real world. If you wind tight, as shown in red, the bottom half of the roll is unacceptably blocked. If you wind normally, only the material very near the core is lost. Finally, if you wind painfully loose, very painfully loose, such that you might get nearly unshippable, egg-shaped, and flat tire rolls, you might save all of the roll from blocking. Yay! The winder saves the day. No more blocking. Only just a few loose roll complaints in its place. Except, as I teach in my winding course, this may not be a safe and reliable position to be in. If the surface or bulk chemistry changes slightly, or if the ink or coating is a bit thicker, or if the dryer does not dry quite as much, or if the hot film is not cooled as well during the summer, or if the summer transportation and storage temperatures increase, or if the product stays longer in storage, or if your new customer is more fussy about blocking, the blocking moves up. Yes, the winding painfully loose by turning all of your TNTs into the mud is always where you start. However, you may not always get to what your customer needs without changing the product chemistry or the process design. We will finish with your customer's unwind, not because it's the least important, but only because it is the last in the chain of processing. There are three unwinding remedies of moderate strength. The first is to increase unwinding tension. The second is to tune the tension controller using the best practices outlined in Chapter 6 of my must-have 
750-page web handling handbook. This will help reduce the tension oscillations a bit. Finally, adding a stripper roller will greatly increase the range of products that can be unwound successfully by controlling the departure. The stripper roller is something like a nip roller used on winders, but is much less fussy for mechanical or control design. If you go to the Must Have Roysum Library Database by Abbott App and type in block into the master search box, you will find about 10 publications. This is not a lot for such a common defect. All but the last three publications have to do with Better Living Through Chemistry. The work by Roysum, Smith, and Walker talk a bit more about the winder. Still, don't expect much more than what we've just discussed here. Thank you so very much for joining me in this Defect Solving and Defect Preventing series. Stay tuned for the next clip where we will talk about another of my favorite defects, bulk loss. If you found anything interesting or useful here, please like and share and subscribe. Please also consider supporting the work of this channel using the Patreon link below. See you next time!